Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I apologize so late, uh, actually wee hours now of the morning. Uh, got a little bit late start uh, doing the news. Been preparing uh, this afternoon or, or late this evening, tonight, however you want to call that. And uh, time's just got away from me. And of course, different phone calls coming in, things like that. A lot of issues happening here. Uh, but I wanted to bring to your attention here because we'd covered a, a few days ago about the situation over in Ukraine. I'd shared with you the intel that we were getting that the Ukrainian military would actually be sending uh, more and more troops uh, to uh, Crimea, Luhansk, uh, and uh, Donetsk regions of East Ukraine uh, in an attempt to what they would claim is to take back uh, part of its territory. And uh, but all the while, this is all smoke and mirrors, because what's really going on uh, is oh, that uh, what's really going on is that uh, uh, Biden has made a deal with the Ukrainian government, a very lucrative deal in order to try to oust Russia and their uh, gas pipeline, the Nord Stream 2, uh, from crossing over Ukraine, going into Europe. Uh, so this was told to us that this was going to happen. Uh, there, I know there were some skeptics didn't believe that that was the case, but now we are seeing that exactly what we were told a few days ago is taking place over in Ukraine. Both these train loads here, this is Michael D. there uh, showing uh, the train cars, two different ones there. This was uh, according to the uh, footage here filmed three days ago. More military equipment, tanks, things like that, all headed towards the Crimea area there. Uh, and, of course, confirming the information we were getting ourselves uh, uh, from uh, Washington there, that this secret deal by Biden had taken place and that they were going to basically make it, uh, kind of push Russia uh, militarily uh, in order to try to get them to back out of running their uh, their pipeline across this territory there. Look at all the tanks on there, Ukrainian tanks here. They're acting like they're getting ready to go to war. And of course, uh, the insider shared with me that uh, the United States doesn't, you know, Biden doesn't really want a war, just trying to flex some muscle. Uh, and of course, they're putting uh, the Ukraine government out there on the meat hook there, so to speak, uh, to provoke the Russian bear. Well, Let's see how that goes. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to share that with you so you can see what's going on there. Uh, is that more of that information is starting to come out there? We're seeing those things actually take place. We'll be watching that uh, closely to see how that, that goes on. Uh, the Finally, the ship, from what we understand, has been freed in the Suez Canal. This Taiwanese ship, uh, the, the actually Japanese owned, uh, but a Taiwanese, Taiwan had uh, leased this vessel. And... Uh, we had gotten some very interesting information from Israeli intelligence. There were a bunch of special ops uh, uh, just off the coast camped out, wanting uh, Netanyahu wanting to board this uh, ship, uh, film uh, opening up all the containers. There were all kinds of allegations going on that we were getting out of Israel about this. And of course, we we're also hearing a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of information that this was done intentionally to cause this major economic crisis uh, that uh, that would uh, affect the global economies. Uh, shortages on oil, everything you can think of as a result in, in different commodities, as a result that other ships, some 400 ships could not traverse through the Suez Canal. Well, I got some information though from our good friend in Israel there, uh, and Lior had sent me a very interesting information there and he said here in an email to me regarding the Suez Canal, as far as I know, Israel is involved in several projects related to the bypass of the Suez Canal, which the Israeli government and other senior Israeli officials began planning long before the maritime crisis. The first project, which particularly worries the Egyptians, is a line for the transportation of oil and distilleries planned to transfer resources from the United Arab Emirates to the port of Elat. This is a line that has potentially to divert significant part of the tanker traffic, which is currently moving to Europe via the Suez Canal. The other two projects about uh, the connection of railroads between Gulf states and the shores of Israel's Mediterranean Sea. So 
Could it be that Israel allowed that ship to get wedged in there just to prove their point that they need that pipeline coming up to Elat? I find it interesting, especially in light of what we just shared with you about this whole thing. You know, we'd been telling you uh, a few days ago how that we'd gotten the information that the that after Biden's visit to Ukraine or his people they're visiting to Ukraine, they struck a lucrative deal that will be padding a lot of pockets. But in uh, exchange, Biden wanted the Ukrainian government to send troops towards uh, Crimea and eastern Ukraine to act like they're going to take back lands and territories to provoke Russia. Because Russia right now, with Turkey as doing the Nord Stream 2, that pipeline would cross Ukraine going up into Europe and would supply Europe. But Israel is wanting to do that. Of course, I'd gotten that information long ago from Israeli uh, friends that we have over there, that everything going on in Syria, the war in Syria is all about getting that pipeline coming from uh, uh, the United Arab Emirates and other allies of Israel there to run the pipeline across Syria and, of course, through the port of Haifa. Uh, and now we're seeing in the uh, email that we got from our good friend there, Lior, over in Israel, that indeed they want to... Uh, Israel has been working on this bypass of the Suez Canal, something that he says Egypt was not very happy about because it's going to cut off their revenue for running the Suez Canal, especially if Israel gets a hold of that. So maybe they're just making case and points. Maybe this is why they jammed this thing up to be able to show the need for having to have this uh, pipeline and, of course, also uh, rail, rail, rail tracks that are coming from uh, the China One Belt, One Road initiative that will be crossing over the different countries there in the Middle East and going into Israel, Israel being the hub nation uh, of sorts there, which I find that interesting in itself. If you think about it, uh, remember when General Wesley Clark said they got uh, they got to take over uh, uh, you know, there, there's going to be seven nations they're going to bring down in and, and five-year period, which, of course, far exceeded that five-year period. But uh, they finished off with Iran, by the way, and Syria was one of those nations. Lebanon was another one of those nations. Uh, every one of these nations are in the paths of the One Belt, One Road initiative, as we pointed out in many broadcasts before. So, all this is coming down to a new world order, a one world government, a one world economy. Uh, need we go on with further and further? And now we're seeing that uh, they're, they're already plotting and planning all these different issues that are happening in order to be able to get this uh, one world global economy going the way they want it. And of course, Israel benefiting from it in ways far beyond anybody's imaginations, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. What can we say? That, that just kind of shows you that right there. So anyway, uh, so China promotes belt and road land routes as alternatives to the Suez Canal, right? Yeah, okay. So is Israel, as we pointed out in the email, Israel's also going to be promoting this idea. But if that's not the only thing, though, I got a friend over on Twitter sent this to me here. Science and technology, new release. U.S. and Israeli partners announce awards for Homeland Security technologies. Well, yeah, the Homeland Security of the United States is partnering with a lot of technologies with Israel to do a lot of, uh, uh, well, clandestine means on Americans. It's bad enough that we're already faced with this pandemic thing going on. And then now they're going to take and uh, bring Israel in and get involved in our homeland security here. Uh, well, that's a bit worrisome. I'll put a link for you to read about this article in the uh, description there. Uh, but um, yeah, just a little bit too much involvement. Foreign countries always involved in our security. Doesn't that kind of bug anybody out there besides me? I don't know. But anyway, uh, Bukai community torture and burn a man to death for allegedly insulting the prophet Muhammad. Now, uh, I would say the images are graphic, but you don't see them. They do have them covered up. But I will kind of give you an idea there. They, they first they, they confronted this man at his home right here. Uh, and he allegedly had insulted the prophet Muhammad and the mob comes there. They drag the guy out and uh, they take him to the center of town there and set him on fire. I mean, this is absolutely horrifying. 
You know, absolutely horrifying. Burnt that guy to death. You know, we are living in a very, very awkward time. So, backed by the leaders of the side community in the Durazo local government area of Bukai State, have burnt a man identified as Talmai Ruwa uh, to death for allegedly insulting the Prophet Muhammad. Sahara reporters learned that Mai Ruwa was dragged away from his house on Tuesday in the presence of his mother and burnt to death in the middle of the community. Whew, talking about extremism. That is definitely some extremism. Also, another friend there on Twitter sent uh, sent this to me here. Uh, t uh, second first alert. This was Channel 2 News. Uh, their uh, live sky cam happened to catch a, um, a meteorite coming in. Welcome so back to Action 2 News this morning on your Monday. We're taking a live look and right now. Here we go. Let's see. It's gonna, Oshkosh. It's, By the way, it's 554. Okay, there it is there. They kind of zoom in on it for you. You can see it a little bit better there. I saw it the first time it played there. I guess it's cloudy or something. And right there, right above the little cursor there, showing that coming in. Yeah, we're getting a lot of people sending me uh, videos of the meteorites and things. More and more we're seeing that, especially those with the sonic booms and stuff. Uh, and uh, so I think next month we'll have a little bit more of that. And then it'll kind of die down. And from what I understand, it'll be... Uh, towards the end of summer that will go into another belt and we'll have yet another. Uh, and supposedly it's going to be double, I guess, double the number of those type of meteorite type events coming in. Uh, so we'll kind of be watching that, see how that plays out. Um, I have ran across some very interesting things here recently. Uh, I'm still wanting to do this teaching, biblical teaching there. A couple of biblical teachings I'm wanting to touch on. I want to get into that Mark of the Beast with you guys, as well as um, uh, some fascinating discoveries I've been making that I want to share with you. And I have tra I'm have i tracing those through the Bible uh, to bring to light some very end of day scenarios of things that are going to happen. Uh, very, very interesting. Anyway, I'm Steve Benoon. Thank you for listening. You're watching Israeli News Live, and God bless you.